okay yeah so something very important we were looking at authority gateways um so we said that one as we can we can um release authority through these authority gateways and we will not see god's um uh, authority and dominion manifest if we try to uh, sort of short circuit you know this this structure which god has given so we have to honor it and i was just saying that if somebody is in a position of leadership let's use that authority okay that's the positive but um uh, uh if i am a leader and i am allowing sin in my life then that can become an open door for demonic influence not just upon me my family but because i'm positioned as a leader over you know maybe lots of people that same confusion you know and generally i mean uh, i don't have any um you know exact uh, scripture or something to tell you uh, to confirm what i'm saying but generally in the same area uh, it's just my my observation in the same area people could could struggle so if the pastor is really um, careless with the way he handles money and if he's if he uh, has you know like um, uh, what do you say unjust ways of handling money uh, people are also open to it they also don't mind pastor is doing and i can do it so in the same area you might find that people also are uh, under the oppression of the enemy or let's say you know lust then pastors open to things like that then the people also so it's a, a scary thought actually that when i'm in a position of leadership um thus if unrepented sin in my life it can not just impact me but other people so when we talk about authority gateway and you know demonic influences we have to be mindful of this and so i have all the more reason to be that vessel of honor before god so that the enemy has no hold on my life neither should the enemy have any hold on the people whom god has entrusted to me now uh moving forward you know what about um, the situation where there are people above us we are in their authority okay so when that happens you know the bible teaches us even in the book of first peter where you see um that we should submit to those persons in authority could be a boss at our workplace could be a leader of our volunteer team in church could be our pastor no could be somebody who is in authority over us so the what is the right attitude submission no submission with a good heart not in a rebellious way but in a good way where we understand oh okay this is the vision of the leader okay fine you know i should flow in line with the vision of the leader and so we uh, walk uh, in submission we walk uh, you know it, it's not to say that you are uh like you're not your own person or you don't have your own opinion it's not like that but it's like okay we are all part of the same vision so i know how to put across my opinion in a good way uh but you know at the end of the day the leader knows what they are doing and if it comes to a, a place where i have to say yes sir you know i'm fine you know i'll do it i'll do it so it's also humility from our side so we walk in that kind of uh honor of the authority that god has placed on our lives so have a proper relationship with our authority honor them we submit to the god appointed authority uh and you know we also recognize that our submission to the leaders that god has placed on our lives is like submitting to god because that's what you know scriptures teach us it's like a right positioning we are in our place whatever is our you know like i i am i am supposed to do this much okay you know i'll do it what my leader supposed to do let them do i'll not try to uh, you know disrupt that in any way so our submission to our authority is like submission to god itself okay and then we um we as our role and responsibility as people who are following a leader 
we must pray for our leaders so then that applies in the church context i should pray for my pastor you know for all the elders my leaders because they are guiding us in the word of god they are guiding us um, you know in the outworking of the vision of the church so uh, yeah instead of you know being uh, rebellious or instead of being uh, uh, like grumbling about our leaders and you know spreading uh, ill thoughts among other believers that's all wrong uh, what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to actually pray for my leaders and say okay god you lead them with wisdom you help them make the right decisions uh, and whatever else you know we observe other things in their lives you know god bless them meet their needs so as a person who is coming under authority uh, that's the right attitude to have and when we have that right positioning you know the leaders are leading the church congregation is honoring the leaders and following it's a great setup for blessing so god can bless and it's a great setup which is immune uh, in a in a sense to the attack of the devil our devil will try his best satan will try his best okay i'll creep in from here through this believer through the words this believer speaks and all but there's no way now because the authority structure is maintained okay so then we can walk with authority we can walk uh, with god's authority and have dominion over the enemy so uh, yeah pray pray for them pray for the leaders uh, and also suppose we notice okay a person in authority over us has an open door of sin i need not think that oh because that person is sinning in this these these areas you know it's okay for me also to do it or mm, uh, you know if i will just you know not not uh, uh bother about it because i'll also get influenced so you know having such mindsets is not required suppose we notice okay there is this weakness that we see in the leader as a follower what i can do is um, i can be careful in my personal life and i can say that okay devil uh yeah maybe maybe my leader has opened this door but it will not affect me i'm going to shut the door in my own life you know i will not give place to gossip or slander or you know what what did i say last uh, things like this okay maybe the el eldership for whatever reason they are uh, in compromise but it will not affect me so i need not get worried that these things will affect me you know as an individual i can cover myself you know through my uh, prayers through my integrity and submission to god's word so that's a little bit about authority gateways and i explained the authority gateways uh, you know little more practically for all of us because then we know how to apply it okay so let me just pause here and we will um, if you want to share something you can share or ask a question and then we will move on to the next chapter there so anything that you want to add to what i said you can do that okay so we saw different ways in which we can apply our authority isn't it um so many ways uh, offense defense then we said prayer intercession righteous acts Mm, uh, we can also agree in prayer with someone and that will also cause you know, the authority to flow uh, angelic assistance and authority gateways so uh, would anyone have any incidents or experiences from your life to share about how you applied you know authority uh, in one of these ways So Zeli, any any thoughts? Because uh, I'm quite aware about your church and you know y'all the way you minister. A lot of intercession goes in. Yeah. 
we go to pray for different people you know for the deliverance and all that so any anything you would like to share about how uh, authority is used uh uh just recall an incident where pastor and i we went to minister uh, like uh, went to for house visitation and at the time like you know like uh, there were two sisters you know and uh, as we prayed we just felt that the spirit of heaviness you know and as i entered the house i just feel so drowsy so sleepy all of a sudden and you know like as we were praying i just feel it to lay my hands on her uh, like head and i just felt I mean, suddenly you know i felt so uh, my uh, uh, headache started to happen you know suddenly out of nowhere so i just said in the name of jesus i just come against the spirit of oppression all those spirit of heaviness to go and after prayer uh, you know like uh, I just felt so relieved and the atmosphere just shifted so drastically. I, I can sense in the spirit, you know, like, uh, and like I can see it's, it's the Holy Spirit who opened my spiritual eyes, I believe, because like I just saw some uh, for like kind of some uh, forces just leaving their house. And like after that, like the atmosphere became so peaceful. And after the prayer was over, like I shared this to my pastor and my pastor also uh, uh, said the same thing. You know, she just felt the spirit of heaviness and, uh, you know, the atmosphere was just so heavy. So after that, like, yeah, that's what we discussed. And we thank God that God brought deliverance to that sisters. Yeah. Yeah, so wonderful, Zeli. Thank you for sharing. Very encouraging um, that you, you know, you uh, actually got through you, got ministered deliverance to a family. And uh, it was through prayer and you took authority. So that's that's good to know. Uh, anyone else, if you have ever had an experience where you have taken charge and you've seen the dominion of God manifest Sitkinu, any any experiences where you prayed for someone or something? Ma'am, like there was an experience in my school time. Mm -hmm. Like it was one of my best friends. He was having like he got fractured. His mm. one hand got fractured and not that much fracture that he couldn't write his exam, but a kind of a fracture. So he was like worried, how will I ex write the exam? And he was a very brilliant student also. So I felt like I should pray for him. I prayed for him. And in that exam, after after that, I was praying. He said, like, I am feeling, he was telling me, he's feeling something like a burden from his head. A heavy burden has been left out. Like a burden has left him. So after that, he wrote the exam. And you won't believe he, he ranked second in that exam. Like, I was also shocked. Because he was worried, like his hand was not work, functioning properly. How he write the exam? He was like, after that, he he came to me. He said, "Man, what you did? Do you know something like you did? So you you uh, you had some mantra or something like that? What you did? Whenever I am having exam, I will come to you. You do the same thing for me." I said, "No, no, no. I don't did some anything. It is just power. Of, it is just God and Jesus." Yeah. Thank you, Sitkanu. I mean, that's uh, you know. Um, so nice that God's power was demonstrated through a friend and he did well in his exams. Uh, and that's also a way we can testify, isn't it, of God's power. So people who don't know, like in this case, you're, you're saying that your friend experienced who God really is. So praise God. Thank you. Thank you also for sharing. Um, maybe one more person from your experience. Have you ever prayed for someone or taken authority? and seen God's power manifesting. Pastor, can I share one? one yeah, more? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. I just, re uh, just remember incident recently, you know, like uh, during our youth service, uh, we were ministering uh, to uh, a bunch of teenagers and uh, in the prayer line, you know, like uh, one sister came, she like, I just, 
I don't know why, but it was the spirit, I believe. Like, I just feel it to ask her, can I pray for you or anything, any uh, thing uh, like, uh, or so like as she said, you know, like she's having a very sharp man inside her ears, you know, both the side of the ears. And I just said, uh, so, okay, just um, I'll, I'll pray. So just believe that God will heal you. So I just prayed over her. I just took authority and I just asked this uh, pain in that ear to leave. And after I prayed, I asked her, how is it, uh, you know, like in the scale of 10, how is it the pain? And he, uh, she shared like nine per, uh, like still nine person is there. Okay, but still we'll again pray and believe that God will heal you. So I just prayed for her again. And, you know, after the prayer and after ministering to her, you know, like she said, you know, the pain is totally gone. And I follow her up after, in the next youth service and I ask her and she said, uh, the pain is no more. So I praise God for that, for healing her. Praise God. Thank you for sharing, Zali. And if I could ask you, uh, I, I don't know if you remember because you know you you probably don't remember the words you spoke, but uh, you prayed for the pain to go away. How do you know how you prayed? Did you say anything like pain be gone or something? Oh, oh yeah, I, I took authority like uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, all the spirit of infirmity, spirit of pain, just uh, leave her right now, just like this. Mm, okay, so then you commanded, isn't it? Yes, yes. Okay, great, great. Thank you for sharing that. So that's how Zeli did it. She commanded the spirit of infirmity to leave uh, this uh, young person and she experienced, uh, you know, healing from that point onwards okay uh jeffina did you want to say something mm, yes yeah. uh, i usually meet people on instagram and uh, help them to stay strong in their relationship with christ so i met a brother once and uh, he actually was speaking about god and everything and all of a sudden one day he texted me that uh he somehow discovered there's a kidney stone and he's suffering from it and so whenever it pains he used to text me and i used to pray for him and this thing didn't happen in a one day we've been praying for a month so whenever he goes through a pain he texts me and i uh, pray through him on voice messages on instagram or on whatsapp or through all the online things so we kept praying and praying and praying and every time i always uh, told that in the name of jesus you are healed that's the end and there is no other thing and there is no other end you are healed and that's what he has said about about you uh, so he always kept believing on that and we have been praying for months every time I was telling and reminding him that he is healed in the name of Jesus and it after like one or two months uh, all of a sudden he texted me like uh, it was a great miracle that I'm completely healed and the doctors are shocked because I was about to have my surgery in one week but now the doctor are saying that I don't need a surgery so it didn't happen in one day but we kept believing and we kept saying the word of God over his life. And now he's completely healed and he's enjoying life. I just want to say that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jeffina. Thank you for sharing that, uh, um, uh, you know, the testimony where uh, a certain brother was healed of his condition. And uh, here, the way you have uh, seen this happen is through prayer, isn't it? So prayer is something that you engaged in and you saw this change so yeah praise god thank you thank you everyone for sharing from your experiences and uh, keep it up with any which way that we have to intervene now it's hard to tell like a formula that uh, every time we have to do only this uh, you have to declare the word or you have to rebuke or you have to command or... so it's hard to tell basically we are open to uh, displaying God's kingdom. So that's what we have in our heart. So whenever we come across a certain situation and uh, depending on that situation, you know, as God's spirit leads us, we will um, yeah, exercise our authority. Okay. So that's how we would do it. And uh, the more we step out and do it, we will understand that, you know, uh, God's power is real and he can, 
you know touch people's lives now let's continue to uh, discuss the same thing but we will also look at the fact that it's not just um you know ministering to people right of course ministering to others is one one thing one area where we can use our authority but there are several areas okay where uh, we need to exercise dominion upon the enemy so starting with starting with our own personal lives that's a place where uh, i definitely need to see victory uh, then in my family you know i need to see victory uh, over the influences of the enemy uh, then the next thing would be ministry what you all shared okay you're praying for somebody you know your friend your uh, your uh, part of the church and you all are ministering together so ministry to others uh then of course you know other spheres that we may be connected to maybe we work in an organization or we are associated with uh, some organization ministries business uh you know other spheres that we may be connected to so in every sphere i'm going to call it sphere in every sphere uh, we have to apply the authority and uh, see how god works so coming to personal lives you know how can i take authority in my personal life now it, this would be more like summing up because we've discussed you know many points across the chapters so in my personal life uh, the enemy can attack me primarily how does he do it through my mind isn't it so that's how he would do it he would use deception of some sort or you know he can use temptation to get me or he could um, you know oppress me with with certain thought patterns and now that oppression could also manifest physically for for uh, some people as an ailment or he can just try to hinder okay i'm trying to serve god i'm trying to read the bible but you know here he is uh, causing a roadblock to that so these are all ways in which he will try to come against me so what should i do um everything that we've listed out you know either in a defensive manner or in an offensive manner i just pick something that applies okay so uh, i might go offensive on the enemy and i might um, take the word of god the way jesus said it is written you know, i i'm coming uh, into temptation and i say oh no devil you can't get me because it is written okay so i start quoting scripture uh, and that way the sword of the spirit i use it on the enemy and i defeat him so i apply whatever would work for that moment my everyday prayer life as i'm building up my uh, prayer life every day i pray for my protection every day you know i pray for my deliverance so what's happening that's defensive i'm covering myself up okay i'm walking in righteousness the enemy cannot penetrate okay i keep every door shut so we've been saying don't give the enemy a foothold you know we talked about it foothold or a space um uh, or you know an open door for the enemy to come in and influence us so uh, unrepentant sin i say no god you know i repent of my sin uh, and uh, the enemy will not have any place in my life so i keep my life and you know i check there is a check uh, upon my life uh, and uh, satan gets no access right so that is sin or oh, even standards i would want to talk about standards so standards simply means that um, mm, uh i know my strengths i know my weaknesses and i know what god's word you know speaks uh as the truth so i have to hold myself up to that standard so i have to make myself accountable to that standard so something as simple as you know uh speaking the truth so i will make sure that hey you know i have to speak the truth uh, and never lie so then that becomes my standard the enemy cannot get in so it's not just that uh, you know that i will open the door through sin but because of my standard enemy will not have an option to come in through that way so maybe he'll try other routes he might say okay how about we try some uh, you know um, 
slander slander is speaking ill of people so i don't have that my standard says no you know i can't do that so then the enemy can't come in or maybe he might try to get me in some other ways right uh, let's take some more simple practical examples mm, uh, let's say that i have just been set free from uh, alcohol addiction and uh, now i'm ministering to people but to protect myself i can have a standard where i say hey when i'm ministering to people i will only minister to them in the church setting or uh, if it is a uh, you know if i'm going for a house visit i'll go with a team of people i won't go alone uh, i will go with a team of people who can hold me accountable and uh, only in the home setting or something so if i if i am little careless and i say mm, no it's okay i will go into the bars or i will go into you know some such places knowing that i had a weakness in that same area so what am i doing i am compromising my standards maybe playing with my standards a little bit so then what happens you know there can be a moment of weakness where i say hey it's okay you know i can just have a drink no problem uh, or it's fine nobody is watching so i am putting myself in a dangerous situation so it's better not to do things like that so there are many such practical things when we are ministering or even here when we go on house visits we generally try to go two by two okay and particularly if it is you know people of the other gender are also going to be there in the house then uh, it's better not to go alone okay uh, meaning or uh, you know i i think you're getting what i'm saying so i have to think a lot and plan for my own protection my own safety my own um, you know uh, life so that i'm not tempted to to do something or the enemy has a way to twist the situation around so you know all these practical things or while while ministering to the opposite gender i you know i always make sure it's a public setting so i not in a in a uh, in a personal way of any sort uh, other people are generally around or it's a public forum where you are ministering to a person of the other gender because i don't want to put myself in a tricky situation right then what happens you know the enemy is always trying he's trying okay where can i get a foothold into this person's life so you see these are all practical things so i am doing my part not just spiritual things where i'm praying i'm saying the word of god and i'm declaring and you know uh, i'm commanding and all but even in terms of my own standards i know hey this is it these are my boundaries i will not allow the devil to get me you know in in any any form or fashion so uh, i'll be careful i'll be double triple careful you know when you're fighting even you're in a war you have to be very careful you don't know from where they will land an attack so even in terms of personal standards i can take authority righteous standards for my own life okay so i i think you're getting what i'm saying so each person is the best judge of your own life and how you must protect yourself even when it comes to ministry right so don't allow any loopholes um or you know ministering timings so i generally try to keep this okay i only a certain time uh, beyond that like if it's if it's a big family that i'm visiting it's okay you know uh, maybe up till 8 o'clock or 8:30 in the evening if i have gone for a visit that's the limit beyond that sorry you know you will only find me in my house or uh, so many things for people it might be very weird oh look at this pastor very old fashioned or very stuck up but you know what we have to protect ourselves we have to have our you know righteous standards in every way so no foothold satan you are not getting any foothold from my side so we try to make things so um you know as as much as po uh, possible practical our best way of uh, protecting ourselves so that way i'm using my authority but i'm also using my wisdom uh, and uh, you're becoming impervious you know in a sense to the devil's attacks so these are all very practical things so you go by that 
and then uh, suppose you know let's say we have fought the enemy in a certain area some oppression and it's manifesting as a sickness you know certain symptoms of a sickness now we have overcome the enemy we have taken authority we've broken the stronghold everything we've done it okay fasted prayed all done now sometimes in personal life uh, it could so happen that um, those symptoms seem to be resurfacing again again those symptoms are coming back that pain is coming back so what happens for us when we talk about taking authority you know we can be discouraged and satan also tries this tactic you know to bring back the problem to bring back the issue to bring back the pain uh, just to test you know are you sure that you have already overcome this or not so there are such instances also where um, you know it might seem like there is a re-entry of that same oppression but every time we notice it we have to go on the offensive you take authority take charge and you say no i cancel it i uproot it you know i destroy it in jesus name you have no right to come back again okay so don't let go of the territory uh, you know spiritual territory that you have possessed um, uh, through that victory and so when it comes to personal life um, you know uh, friends uh, we really have to be very intentional intentional in the mind area in the uh, you know in the area where okay a righteous life i should not allow sin into my life or i should not allow myself to fall because weakness where is my weakness okay if my weakness is over here over there i will you know they they say right like beef up the security so i'll have boundaries my for myself and say i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do this i'm not going to allow this that because it's about my security i cannot let the enemy come in in any way okay so all these things really matter and uh, for uh for the long haul because we are not here fighting the devil only for a few moments isn't it so many of these things apply for a lifetime where i maintain this is it this is my prayer life this is my word life this is my ministry life these are my standards okay these are my boundaries okay and then you see that we are dominating and not the devil so in personal life in these ways uh, some practical ways also we can um, protect ourselves and also exercise our authority then it will be very effective when we do it now coming to family same thing same thing think of all the ways you know spiritual ways then um, righteousness boundaries uh, you know all that so then what happens basically we are raising a hedge around our family we are protecting our family and also employ wisdom right employ wisdom when it comes to a family um so yeah even through the decisions that we make we might say okay wrong influences uh, i'm just giving some random examples okay so uh, let's say the children are very young and uh, they don't know how to use the internet properly so then you decide you know how best to let them have the experience of the internet but at the same time you know they should not be affected in a negative way maybe with parental supervision every time they use for projects or something you're around you know what kind of roughly know what the child is meddling so wisdom is also there right so you're protecting them one is you pray for them you take authority you bind loose but you also apply wisdom so then you know you are allowing certain things you are not allowing certain things right in the household so that way uh, your family is protected and uh, you have uh, you know you're overcoming the attacks of the devil so think of spiritual plus practical okay so then you can really mm, help out your own family uh, then coming to uh, ministering to others so how do you exercise your authority same thing prayer through uh, through you know all taking charge you you're commanding and pulling down and binding losing rebuking all that 
we we do all of those things uh, and we can see god's victory over their life so uh, what in additionally additionally and also same uh, practical things also we can think of you know how can you uh, be very practical when you plan your ministry for them uh, and you plan your church service so many uh, things you could employ now coming to um, ministering to them in different ways uh, we can minister to them through faith that means that as a minister okay i want to take authority now let's say somebody is going through sickness now we know in james 5:14 we have seen that a prayer of faith will heal the sick so as a minister i should go you know full pumped up in my faith then what happens then i am going and praying for that person i'm releasing faith so then the person receives healing or they receive deliverance mm, how did it happen through faith my faith and it worked in that person's life now one good example of uh, uh, faith can also um, yeah okay fine I, i'll just leave it at that so that is about faith so i am strong in the faith and then uh, that faith manifests the power of god now in different ways we can minister i think you will study about this in your second year uh, more in detail when we study healing and deliverance okay so i'm just giving you some um in like preliminary insights into this so next is word of god so word of god means that uh, i teach the word okay and i equip the individual uh, about the power of god's word so then what happens they learn how to use the word so let's say somebody is sick then i'm teaching them about the cross how jesus has won victory on the cross then i'm teaching them many different scriptures by the stripes of jesus you know you were healed then uh, i teach them like you know uh 1 peter 2:24 because jesus hung uh, on the cross again by the stripes of jesus you are healed uh, god um, sends his word and he heals your diseases uh, jesus he uh, all the sick were brought to him and he healed them all so what is happening through the word through the equipping of the word of god uh, that person is receiving healing and you know ministering through the word is also very helpful because um, they are not just depending on the pastor's faith or the elder's faith all the time but they themselves know how to declare the word upon them upon their lives okay so uh, there are many testimonies of people who have used the word and who have experienced healing or they have experienced deliverance so this is ministry through the word okay uh, so i i hope are you all understanding what i'm saying so ministering by faith ministering through the word does it make sense or am i confusing it if you've got it please say put a yes on your chat okay yeah one person has understood how about the other okay great great you all are understanding so uh, when we are ministering to others we could use our authority through faith i am employing my faith and i am seeing results or equipping them in the word generally in a church setting setting that's how it works isn't it the pastor will preach from the pulpit what's happening the truth is being opened up to people so then their lives are being transformed they're learning the truth oh okay 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 i'm getting it you know and then the the word of god is getting deposited into them into their hearts they are applying it they're using it and then the deliverance comes the healing comes so through the word is another way in which we can minister next is anointing anointing is the power of the spirit remember in matthew 12 where jesus said that mm, uh, uh this person you know the person who was uh, demon possessed that person was set free by the spirit of god he did it by the spirit of god so there are times when the holy spirit will just break the bondage the holy spirit will just you know uh, manifest the healing so even by the anointing by the anointing people can be set free so there are many ways or if you want to call it methods but again there is no formula 
it's all about our intimacy with the lord our walk with the lord depending on the situation depending on the person's need sometimes it might be right to minister via faith just apply our faith to see the breakthrough but it might be more appropriate to minister through the word at some times or it might be the right thing for the spirit of god to take charge and release a healing or a deliverance so the point is for us we are talking about uh, releasing dominion and authority while ministering to others right so i should be able in different ways whatever it takes i should be ready and equipped to minister in that manner that's the point so in this way we can uh, exercise dominion over you know sickness that satan puts on people or oppression demonic influence stronghold um, all these things that satan might do and uh, be open to the leading of the holy spirit in each situation as god god what do you want me to do what do you want me to do and you know so many different ways god might lead us like zeli said she laid hands and god said okay go ahead and that person received a breakthrough but god might just say you know maybe you can take some oil and anoint with oil these are all there in the in the bible by the way so there are many different methods sometimes you don't have to even do that you just command or sometimes you're just there praying without touching anybody you know god's power is demonstrated so many 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 different ways we cannot box up god and that's why intimacy with god and listening to the spirit of god is the way to go uh, and uh, you know he will tell you in that situation what you should be doing so here are some more things that we can use when we are praying for people led by god's spirit we could also uh if we discern oh there are some remember i i told us people make commitments right people make vows and they dedicate their children their grandchildren to demonic spirits so when we sense ha this sickness has to do with one of those dedications then you could actually go ahead and break it okay so we can break that vow uh, and one of the ways in which the the vow should be broken could also be that person has to pray with you okay and uh, we'll see this later in the practical aspects you pray with them and you tell them you know to say i i uh, revoke i take back that commitment or that dedication which was made by my grandfather over my life to such and such a goddess in the name of jesus i break it so so what's happening you're breaking past vows because what are those vows those are all open doors to say okay come satan trespass territory is open to you you can come do your you know create havoc destroy no problem but we are saying no you can't do that so then when i break the vow i'm sealing up the walls once again and uh, giving no entry basically it says no entry to you the uh, devil but there could be curses right curses how how does it happen see curses has to do with mm, maybe uh, uh patterns of disobedience in the previous generations which have brought you know the consequence of that disobedience sin the what what is the consequence of sin you know uh, the wages of sin is death it brings a lot of destruction with it so there could be things that have not been dealt with or restitution has not been made for that or we have offended god uh, you know through some actions or words and that automatically can release what we call as curses or they can also be you know curses uh, as what people have put on others okay and in the occult people do things like this they put curses on on one another and all uh, but then for us if we sense for whatever reason see we've already seen that these things don't apply uh, to a believer because we are set free by the work of jesus but if there are open doors then you know we have to go and break those curses 
okay uh, and uh, so as a minister as a minister we might send sometimes oh there is an associated curse here so let's do it uh, and uh, use your authority and have it done or some dedications we've already seen you know, we can break that or past sins we might call for repentance uh, in that moment maybe the, you know some many times during deliverance spirits are very stubborn they won't leave if you have not closed the door they will linger around and the person ministering is wondering why 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 is this not you know why is this demon spirit not coming out so only when you shut this door by breaking the dedication, uh, repentance for sin, and mm, uh, so many such things, right? Then the door is shut, and then you can sort of uh, see a release in the person. Uh, also, we could speak healing to emotional wounds. Now, sometimes those are the things that keep mm, people bound. People have been through trauma, they've been through hurt, uh, and they they could they could have totally given into it and said okay i'm going to i am going to live in this space everybody is like this people are all like this no, nobody understands so when they've gone in that route for really long we said stronghold no those thought patterns they become very settled in their minds and people are not breaking it through the word of god they're not renewing their minds so all these emotional issues they got stuck into it and strongholds are the places they are the fortresses where demon spirits take charge so they might have uh, you know uh, actually started influencing the person so whatever it is we are noticing all these strongholds while we are ministering we need to release people from these things only then they will experience proper freedom and uh, you know go from there now again we will study when it comes to deliverance this is not the end of our ministry okay either we ourselves or uh, through someone else we will also have to look at ways to um, help people renew their minds uh, you know get the right direction for the path ahead so there's always a little more rehabilitative kind of uh, a ministry involved uh, for deliverance and it is helpful because once the person has broken out of you know these emotional wounds trauma hurt um, you know, consequences of the abuse that they went through they resettle their mindset you know with uh, the the healing that comes from god's word the victory that comes from god's word so their mindset is re-established uh, with the word of god or we call it renew the mind it is renewed then going forward in life they can really live like a different person okay with the new mindset so but that is also going to take work you can't just uh, assume that okay now that we broke the uh, stronghold we broke the curse oh everything is fine no they might need little more work to help them become stable and you know move forward so this is the manner in which we can exercise our authority while we are ministering to others when it comes to organizations um, um you know there can be a spiritual influence remember we we said that so how do i overcome through our prayer through our declaration of god's word so this doesn't mean that you are disrupting the authority structure because what is the authority structure in an organization or a business or a workplace your employer is the boss and then you know comes the employee and then there is a proper gradation okay the way uh, instructions flow so we are not talking about disrupting it but as a believer in the workplace, we have an influence. We can have a positive influence. What is that? To bless our workplace, to bless our boss, our colleagues, you know, the, the business, to see profit in it. So use the rightful influence which we have. Okay. Now, when it comes to the enemy, now let's say there is uh, uh, some mm, uh, jealousy spirit hostility spirit working in the workplace so as a believer how do i use uh, my authority in the organization you bind it okay you bind it you declare 
God's peace, God's wisdom, God's favor. So I'm using my influence in a right way. And uh, if there are unrighteous activities going on, you know, people are bribing one another, um, people are, uh, you know, making somebody look bad, or maybe even, you know, uh, there are sexual advances which are unrighteous. So many things go on, you know, in organizations and in, in, in out there in the world. But as a believer, you know, I can walk in righteousness. I can walk in godly standards. So when I follow these godly standards, what did I say? You're kind, you're letting the enemy not have a, like he's trying to get in, but hey, I can't reach this guy. It's like a Daniel or a Shadrach, Mishak, Abednego. He's standing up for the right things, uh, having a righteous life where nobody is able to pinpoint. Like Daniel is put into the lion's den, all right. But even the king's heart is for him because he knows, hey, this is a righteous guy. He never did anything like that. So God's deliverance will manifest on our behalf if we walk righteous and uh yeah basically the influence which we have to whatever extent i'm not saying we can manipulate the boss or you can manipulate the management no because that's not the authority structure i don't have the authority to do that but i do have an influence which is positive to bless people to call forth the kingdom of god his peace his righteousness and you know his joy all that to manifest in my organization or my workplace so today we have learned how how we can apply our authority uh, in different ways and also we have seen the different spheres right in a spiritual practical way how can i uh, apply authority in my personal life in my family when i'm ministering to people and also organizations okay so with that uh, you know we will wrap up today's session if you have any questions comments we can take it up if not we'll just pray and close okay all right, let's let's close in prayer then. Uh, just request anybody who is feeling comfortable to please go ahead and lead in prayer. Okay, Rosalind. Are you able to pray? Okay, Pastor, I'm praying. Pastor yeah, yeah, please go ahead, Subhashish. Thank you. Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord, from this morning. Lord, once again, I thank you for helping us to learn more about your word, Lord. Help us, Lord, to implement it in our life and the ministry, Lord. Once again, I thank you so much for our dear pastor. Thank you for helping her to make her understand, Master, your word, the mysteries, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, you bless us that in the days to come, Lord, we will see that we are like warrior and uh, we are helping fulfilling your great commission on this, on this earth, Master, Lord. I pray for all our dear ones who are learning together, Lord. You bless them, bless the family. I thank you, praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Subhashish, for uh, praying. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. God bless you. Hope you learn a lot from this course. And most importantly, apply it in your life and be victorious uh, against the devil. Right. So God bless you. Have a great day. Have a, a wonderful weekend. See you next week.